Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of... 3, 2, 1... Pitch Slap! And tonight, Dan the Man and I are proud to bring you another one of these uh, kind of remixes where we take a film or a story that's kind of been done before and we put our own spin on it. If you tuned in, what is it, a week ago or two weeks ago? Something like that. We touched, we touched on uh, the Game of Thrones finale, and today we are touching on something that might be truly important to some. Others might say it set the vampire and werewolf genre back. It also gave us the rise of Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson's first foray into bat-themed characters. And that film we're talking about, Dan, is what? Twilight. Ah. So with that notion, Dan is gonna first hook us up with his version of Twilight. How he would do it if the studio was like, you know what we need? We need this to be sim cocked. Um. Well, um, I don't. I don't like that verb. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but well, thank you, Stefan, um, for giving me the floor. Um, so I went pretty ironic with this um so to the viewers i wrote notes about this like a couple weeks ago and i haven't looked at them since then and i'm realizing like wow i'm such an asshole um because i i like i i really like took some of the concepts of twilight and i was like okay we're gonna just like go full stupid with it you know um and that's not to say like there's nothing to love about twilight because i think that there's you know, for the people who enjoy the series and enjoy the books, enjoy the movies, like, it's very earnest. There's an earnest love story at the center of it. You know, you have, like, a superhero boyfriend who's going to, like, protect you, you know, whenever. Like, I could see the fantasy in that. Um, just, like, super-powered people, you know what I mean? Uh, like, she creates, like, a cool vampire-slash-superhero story, but she doesn't, like go full tilt into it um so like i said this is not like a cool remix of the story this is a super ironic remix of the story um in my version uh you know i w what i had in my mind remixing this i was just trying to like fill in some of the plot holes so like for example why are these vampires deciding to go back to high school <laughs> generation after generation after generation and using the idea that these are actually like superheroes you know they're like superhero vampires mm -hmm. they all have like unique abilities i was like well they need to have a kryptonite they need to have a kryptonite so maybe algebra is their kryptonite maybe algebra is their kryptonite like they can't wrap their heads around it like as soon as you become a vampire like you cannot understand algebra so they keep on failing high school you know what i mean and instead of like saying F it, like, I'm, I, I just don't want to be in high school anymore. They're like, you know what? We're going to keep trying. We're going to keep on trying to understand algebra. Um, so that's their kryptonite. Um, you know, so I was thinking, you know, they have this character who can, like, predict the future, um, but she doesn't really use it in any cool way. Um, so I thought, like, oh, it would be really cool if there was some sort of time-traveling vampire superhero story. Um, with, like, a little bit of, like, Shrek in there. Um, so let me just pitch you this really bonkers, stupid idea that I came up with two weeks ago. So um, the Collinses are, like, very pretty vampires. You know, they're very pretty vampires. They, like, sparkle. And the reason that they're so pretty is because they suppress their vampire powers. Because if they don't and they go full tilt vampire and use their superhero powers... They'll become like these monstrous, ugly Nosferatu type vampires, and they're very vain people. Um, so they can't risk doing that. So that's why they don't drink like human blood. Um, they don't go full tilt into their uh, superhero powers. Um, and then for some reason, in my notes like I just skip straight to the end. <laughs> so you know, in the middle, there's got to be a love story of some sort. But Bella dies at the end like she full full ass dies i'm thinking that she like fell and hurt herself um and i mean it is part of like 
the it is canon that Bella is very clumsy. Um, so I'm thinking like Bella dies. Uh, oh yeah, I wrote it. I wrote it down. Like not even vampire related. She fell into traffic. Something stupid. <laughs> um, and Edward, you know, Edward like loses it. You know, he goes like full tilt vampire mode. He runs so fast that he changes the direction of the earth and he turns back time <laughs> to save Bella. It's like literally like Superman. The you know, flashpoint like, oh, paradox? Yeah, yeah, flashpoint. It's like Superman. Um, they did like a really cheesy version of it, you know. So he brings Bella back to life, you know. But because he's used his full superpowers, now he's like really, really ugly. Now he's like Nosferatu, you know. And Bella has to reconcile with that, you know. I love this person, but they're no longer pretty. You know, so there's some sort of there's some sort of journey there. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm reading these notes, Stefan, and I'm like, I'm kind of an asshole. Um, but I will say, like, something that I think like the first Twilight like I, I think out of all of the Twilight movies like the first one is the most enjoyable because it's sort of fun it's got a little bit of campiness to it it's like a little bit self aware and I think that Twilight if it was rewritten in an unironic sense like it was just like very earnest I could think it could use a little bit more camp you know just be a little bit more fun with itself I mean you literally have like sparkling vampires that we're supposed to take like fully seriously you know in the universe so i'm like just have fun with it you know what i mean um and also i find at the end of like the twilight story it's like what was this even about you know like there's not much that goes on besides just like staring at each other the entire time and like i don't know like the threat of some vampire attacking bella but, like, what is the point of, like, I feel like it's trying to say something about love. Um, and what I think it's saying uh, in sort of a, not a great way uh, is, like, you should be, like, willing to sacrifice yourself um, or, or sacrifice everything at all costs, um, you know, to, I don't know, for love, you know? And I feel like that was the plot of like Romeo and Juliet, but that's not the takeaway of Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet was like a tragedy, you know, like people died in that and it wasn't like, Oh my God, it's such a love story. It's like, Oh my God, they died because they're, they live stupid lives. Their parents are like fighting. You know what I mean? So I feel like Twilight just needs like some needs to like have layers, like an onion, like Shrek. Like, you know Shrek. What I mean? like Yeah. Like it just needs something like, what is the story about? Like, learning to love somebody even despite their faults, even despite Edward, I don't know, like looking ugly, <laughs> even despite Bella being a, a klutz. I don't know. Um, you know, it. I feel like it should try to like say something a little bit about love or, you know, relationships and it really doesn't. Also, we kind of like jump straight into like, I love you mode in the Twilight mm. movie and then the book. And I think it would be kind of just cool to, like, see it build, you know, sort of like um, Shrek and Fiona. Yeah, sort of like Shrek and Fiona. Yeah. yeah. And I think also I'm, 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 I I'm feel like Bella gets a lot of shit because she doesn't have a lot a big personality, which is fine, you know, but I feel like there's something inherent about Bella that we needs to be mined some like what is her character? You know, she comes from a, a family that's like broken, you know, her parents are divorced. She's trying. I mean, she says everything's cool with her mom, but she ostensibly like runs away from her mom, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, you know, there's also this weird thing where like Edward can't read her mind. So I think there's something there like maybe she closes herself off to love. You know what I mean, and by the end, she has to open herself to love. You know, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of stuff that Stephanie Meyer could have done with it that would have been made it just a little bit more spicy. You know what I mean? Um, but with that being said, it's entertaining. Um, I'm a real asshole. Sorry for anyone no, who's man. watching this. Um, well, I didn't read you the entire thing. I said, um, 
you know, so when they use their full superpowers, I said they turn into monstrous Muppets, uh, Nosferatu type puppets. Like <laughs> they, they just turn into puppets. Suck. Um, just... Yeah, and like, yeah, I'm an asshole. Sorry for all the people who love Twilight. It seems to me like you're taking this movie that, you know, has been riffed on in, uh, like, a lot of capacity, right? Like, when it came out, it was a tween film, like, oh, my God, Team Edward, Team Jacob, ah, yas, bitch, right? Like, that kind of stuff, <laughs> which is fine, right? Like, I watched Twilight with my cousins, and, you know, they were looking for the next Harry Potter, right? Because those movies had just, like, were on their way out, right, before they did these prequels. Uh, they're not prequels, but, you know, uh, films within the same world of it. So they're looking mm-hmm. for that. So a lot of things got greenlit. Hunger Games, this, Divergent. Um, only really one of those is good, and that's Hunger Games. But that's neither here nor there. So, like, there are a lot of things the studio could have done. And they, you know, in a lot of ways, like we said in the intro, set vampire films back. But I think you've taken this and, like, Fun it how someone in the 80s perhaps might have done it. Like, what's popular? We got this vampire film and Marty McFly. Let's mix these two together and, like, go on a crazy, like, trip. And, like, I feel like there'd be a lot of fun music that could be played in your version, right? And then you you have a very interesting point, right? Typically in movies, right? And I know they're trying to be more progressive today, but... They're not always, right? Most people who fall in love in films are always good-looking, right? Like, it's like, oh, you're ridiculously attractive. They're ridiculously attractive. It's not just like, oh, hey, she has a very – she's very cute. She has a very nice, like, mind, you know, along with that. But, like – Maybe people don't look like Sports Illustrated models on a regular basis. You know what I mean? And same for guys, too. Why can't the guy be like, you know, like this whole dad bod thing? I think that's a little, you know, strange that that's like what it's called. But like, you know, you don't got to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger to be appealing to people, you know, or or stupidly ripped or the captain of a football team like uh, stereotypical high school, you know, dictates. So I think that's important. It's a commentary about love and relationships as well as wacky antics, and I like that Muppets happen. Everything is yeah. better with Muppets. I guess it was the Count that I was thinking of. You know, like, <laughs> they turned into the, the Count. <laughs> yeah. Not that the Count is particularly ugly. and I think he's more cute than ugly, but, mm. you know, make him look a little bit more like Nosferatu, and that's what I think. Yeah. And yeah. then it becomes like, oh, can true love, like, because they do it, they appreciate each other for who they are on the inside to then, mm. like, on the outside, like, that kind of thing. How, you know, how many licks to the center of a Tootsie Roll pop, right? It's your Tootsie Roll pop you got to get to. Yeah. Man. I like that. I like that a lot. Why Muppets, though? I got to know. Why Muppets? I, I think that was just my imagination going stupid. Okay. It was just like... <laughs> What's the craziest thing that craziest secret that Edward could have is that <laughs> really if he went full vampire mode he would turn into something like that's not even human that is quite literally a muppet dude you, know? you just had a really good idea what if like a separate thing, right? The Count gets kicked off of Sesame Street and he goes fucking bananas and starts attacking people and turning them into vampires. Okay, I think we need to do a spin on Sesame Street. Oh my god! Yes, we need to get a Dracula puppet and then just make that movie. I'm sorry, man. You're fired. I think, Stefan, you should take take the lead on this. Oh my god. All right, we'll we'll have to dive into that in another episode. But Dan, you're a genius, a genius. Or my asshole. Uh, That's th- for the viewers to decide. I think they love you. That's just my thought, and no. I think your story gives Belle or Bella, whatever she's going by, more 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 depth, right? And not that she had to have it to begin with because like the more people I've met in life and I'm sure you can attest to the same thing you know there's a lot of people who just kind of act like Belle they're just like I'm here and that's enough and I think 
Kristen Stewart got a lot of, you know, a lot of nonsense for that performance in some regards. But, you know, I'm sure she based it off of someone who's trying to figure themselves out. And they don't really talk much. Which is exactly what t- some teenagers are. Both of us being, you know, uh, in in education, academia, right? We see a lot of people who fit that bill. So, yeah, I don't think she deserves that hate. But I like that it, it makes her more of the fo- – not that it didn't make her the focus in the original, but it makes her have to contemplate certain things, right? So, like, the first act, it seems like it belongs to Edward – but then, like two to th- two belongs to her, and then the third, it's both of them trying to figure this out together. Yeah, and then she dies. <laughs> yeah. Wait, yeah. wait. Even though he goes back in time, she still dies. Oh no, no. He saves her like Superman. You know, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. But how saves does her, like, it Superman. end? Because if he goes back in time and they're trying to figure out, like, oh, you're a hideous nose for our two puppet, and I'm Kristen Stewart. <laughs> Yeah. And we're back in time. How does it, like, just, does them, like, realizing they love each other make them reset things the right way? Or are they stuck in that time frame and he's forever they, a puppet? So they they unlock the multiverse. Okay, okay. Uh, and out steps more puppets. Oh, God. But these puppets are uh, werewolves. So, nice. yeah. They, they <laughs> by going back in time he opens the multiverse the the vampire or maybe it's just the vampire multiverse so you get like all different types of vampires okay step into the movie so you get like the dracula from um gary Oldman's dracula you get like blade you get like all of these <laughs> different yeah you get all of these different like vampire uh, versions and that's where like you, you leave it off for the sequel <laughs> new moon yeah That that is fantastic, Dan. It yeah. really is. They need more puppet related films out there. And I think the sequel is going to be a musical too. It's got to, you know, it's going to be a musical. Okay. I said embrace the camp. It's got to, you know, they're just going to break into song. I could see Gary Oldman as <laughs> as Dracula breaking into song. I I like this a lot. Yeah. <laughs> the Van Helsing type Dracula people. Oh, that's a, just a good movie. Yeah. It's a very good movie. That's yeah. a plug. You, if you haven't seen yeah. Van Helsing, you need to check that out. We bring it. We bring Hugh Jackman back. I would be so yeah. down for anything more with him. In the in the sequel, then Edward dies because Van Helsing hunts him down. Is he still so, in puppet form? Is it puppet Van Helsing or real yes. life Van Helsing? Well, I think it would have to be. Re- well, we want Hugh Jackman back, so it's real Hugh Jackman. Real Van Helsing attacking a puppet. Mm. You know. I like this. And then Bella gets a time turner. <laughs> she she hops the multiverse, goes into Harry Potter land, gets a time turner, and that's in the third one where she turns back time to get Edward back. And is Ron jealous of this? Yes. <laughs> of course he is. And then Hagrid's like, Harry, this is a vampire. <laughs> hey, and that's where the werewolves come in, because like werewolves are part of the Harry Potter universe. So, you know. Yes, yes, they are. Yeah. It's all connected. It's all connected. <laughs> I feel like an Illuminati member right now, just like connecting like disparate dots. <laughs> This sounds like the trailer for the new Spider-Man movie where Stephen Strange explains how the multiverse works to Peter Parker. <laughs> and this happens. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, that's just fantastic, homie. I, I dig that a lot. I think more puppet madness. I like puppet Edward. And I think, I again, this, this lends itself to some 80s fun. So kudos to you, brother. Thank you. Well, I look forward to hearing your uh, take on Twilight in the next episode. Uh, So everybody who's watching, keep watching. Wait till next week because Stefan's going to lay down his plan for Twilight. And I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Um, With that being said, this has been another episode of 3, 2, 1. Pitch slaps. Uh, Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.